This is my alkaline battery charger. A quick build on scrap wood. Upper left is a 555 timer chip. Center is the transistor mounted upside down under the silicone flap. And to the right is a hand wound inductor sandwiched between plastic bottle caps. Silicone spacers are used under the epoxy board so component wires can be twisted and soldered. And the output of this charger is connected to a battery cradle like this one. I recommend just four battery holders for this circuit. Note the isolation diodes on each holder. I also recommend using this power supply to imitate my results. This supply has a flat and steady 12 volts. Home Depot has this particular model. And last, this outlet switch to turn the circuit off. I suggest two hours per battery, then measure and charge more if needed. Here's a look at the schematic diagram. It's a bit long. Here's the upper half and the bottom half. Now this circuit's primary purpose is to charge this inductor. This entire circuit was designed and tuned around this specific inductor. It can make a strong magnetic field quickly with little power. This inductor core is the T200-26 iron powder toroid, which is color-coded yellow-white. And this is the magnet wire I used. 28 gauge, 96 feet of which were used to wrap this inductor core. And this is the finished inductor. I've isolated just the timer section of the circuit and its purpose is to turn this transistor on and off. Let's look at the duty cycle. The duty cycle of the timer is 25.7%. If you round that back to 25, it means that the circuit is on for one measure of time and off for three. It's operating at 280 hertz. And I have an oscilloscope shot of the square wave that it's outputting. You can see the square waves are uh, about one millisecond precisely in duration, and they're off for a little less than three and you can see that it's putting out 2.8 volts. Now when the direct current is disconnected by this transistor it causes a magnetic field collapse in the inductor which causes a very brief very high voltage spike and that voltage spike is what ultimately charges these batteries. Let me show you what that looks like this is a picture of the voltage spike going into a dummy load of 1000 ohm resistor in parallel with a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. You'll note that the division is set for 2 volts and you'll see 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 volts here. Somewhat over 10 volts. Uh, I also used a 10x reduction probe so this is over a hundred volts and thanks to the capacitor I have a little bit of a foot so I can see the voltage spike clearly. Here's a canned shot of that demi load I was just describing. Taking the place of the batteries to be charged. I use this for my testing so I can tell what's happening. Can't measure a voltage spike across a battery. I'd like to take a moment to point out that the process I'm using is a patented process. It is patent number 7990110 and the inventor is John C. Bedini. I'll enlarge this uh, portion over here and basically uh, any magnetic field collapse generating a voltage flyback situation with the purpose of recharging a battery falls under the purview of this patent. 
In this portion of the video, I would like to explain my usage of the term cold electricity, by which I mean voltage with no amperage, and I would like to state how that is possible. First, a few quick definitions. Voltage is an electrical potential difference of charge between two points. Electrons are charge carriers. Amperage is a specific number of electrons crossing a fixed point per second. This slide from an educational source states that amperage is the flow of electrons through a circuit. The current is pushed through the circuit by the pressure of voltage. And there's some tiny print down here saying voltage forcing electrons through a wire. I have a slide here from Rimstar.org. This is from a YouTube video in which he shows a race between a snail and an electron. Here he shows the drift velocity of electrons in a simple circuit. The drift velocity is only 0 0.028 inches per second or 0.7 millimeters per second. So the electrons are moving slowly through the wire. Conversely, the speed of electric charge, which is measured in volts, moves at 96% the speed of light. Looking again at our voltage spike the battery charger is generating, keep in mind this oscilloscope shot is through a capacitor to widen the foot of this voltage spike. It is of extremely short duration, much shorter than I'm showing here and the off time is considerable in relation. So it's on for a very brief moment of time and off for a much greater period of time. Let's sum up with the slide from Boundless Physics. When a voltage is flowing through a wire, the electron drift is happening very slowly and the voltage duration is so brief the electrons don't have time to travel in a coherent drifting movement down the wire. So essentially you can have a high voltage without detecting any amperage. And that is what I mean by the use of the term cold electricity. So in conclusion, the batteries are being charged by high voltage very brief pulses. There's no time for amperage to develop so the voltage is imparting charge back into the batteries and they are not being heated by any coherent amperage. So even a tender primary alkaline battery that's not meant to be charged can withstand being recharged using this method. So that is my explanation of this circuit uh, I have a picture on my Pinterest account of the schematic at Pinterest Ron Girth. If you do make the circuit, please post a video. I'd like to know how you did.